Yes, sir. Welcome back to Talking Nets, episode 72, like they put on the back of the Biggie City Edition jerseys. Keith McPherson, Hudson Flynn. It is Thursday night, January 7th, 2021, and your Brooklyn Nets turn back the clock to 1991, 30 years ago with the throwback unis, the throwback court uh it was a vibe tonight Hudson Flynn how are you feeling after watching the Nets get a back-to-back win man before they even got that win I was just looking at the court looking at the jersey feeling the vibes you know feeling you know the retro feeling but also you know we had that revenge energy coming into this 76ers game and obviously we have two games to talk about today but we're recording this 10 34 p.m literally you know minutes after the Nets just beat the brakes off the 76ers. And so we're kind of still feeling that energy and that revenge energy from the 2019 playoffs that got brought into this game. We saw Jared Allen more ferocious, both on the, you know, on the boards in his game and after the whistle more than we've ever seen him in his entire career, he was getting teed up. He was talking to Dwight Howard after the whistle. He got Dwight Howard's ass fouled out right quick. He had Joel with five fouls on the same way. If the game, had, if, he, if Joel had played through the finish of the fourth quarter, he would have been out of there too. Tobias Harris had five fouls. Everyone was getting riled up. TLC throwing the ball back at him. Tex across the board. Nets get the big win. And man, shit, Keith, did I need that? <laughs> so did I. Because before this game, we get news that Kyrie Irving isn't going to play. And we'll get to, to that in a minute. I don't want to mess up the vibe because – Hey, it's about the win. It's about the Jared Allen revenge tour. So far now, right? I saw you just tweet about Jokic. Jokic is next on the hit list. But hey, Gobert and Embiid, sorry about it. You're the first victims on this revenge tour. And my man is starting. They said he put the Alfredo on his pasta instead of the pesto. That must have turned him into a different kind of guy. I love to see it. You love to see it. Uh, what did we talk about on this podcast? Shout out to the Talking Nets fam that can go back to the bubble and go back to last season with us now. What did we talk about with Jared Allen? That mean streak. We want to see him get mad. We want to see him get mean. We know he could do it. And something changed in the bubble. And you keep hearing Chris Sheeran reference it. Shout out to Chris Sheeran um, on the post game, pregame stuff with Frank Isola about like, you know, what this did to this team. And we got the bubble nets out there, right? The next man up, Nets. No Kyrie, no KD. I even am watching the pregame and they're like, Tyler Johnson is out for uh, COVID protocols. I'm like, yo, what is going on? You obviously know Spencer is out. Bubble Nets are back. And it's about energy. It's about how they started these last two games. So let's talk about the Sixers game. And I guess before we get in the game, let's just, uh, just address Kyrie. What did you hear Steve Nash say about Kyrie just now in the, in the postgame? about why Kyrie didn't play. So I'll just go from the beginning. Uh, Brian Lewis came on, he asked a question and he asked, you know, there's been reports that Kyrie quote, just didn't want to play. That's a direct quote uh, from the report. Not going to give too much credence to that report. And here's why, because as soon as that report was asked about on the post game presser, Steve Nash said, just fair and square. I don't believe that because you know, I don't believe that. You don't believe that. This is the Jersey night. This is the closest thing we've had to a New Jersey homage night, you know, with this Brooklyn Nets team ever. And Kyrie is that Jersey guy. And as soon as I saw that news, I sent out a tweet. Kyrie's not missing this game for just anything. He's missing it for personal reasons. And I'm going to respect those personal reasons. And I'm not going to speculate. I'm not going to say anything about that. All I'll say is Kyrie's not missing this game for nothing. He's a person. There's a lot of things happening in the world right now. If someone says they have to go and miss something, especially a big event to Kyrie like this, you know it's serious. So we're just going to, you know, hope everything's okay with him, you know, send our prayers his way and just try and keep all that positive vibes that we've had from the game, you know, flowing all the way to Kyrie, wherever he was, whatever he was doing tonight. Man, peace and shout out to Kai. I hope he's well. I hope he's good. We also heard before the game that Richard Jefferson would not be on the call. The Yes Network tweeted that out less than an hour before tip-off that Richard Jefferson wouldn't be on the call. That's another New Jersey Nets guy that would have loved to be there to see the court and see these jerseys tonight. Something was going on. I I got scared. I got PTSD from, from Kobe last year 
I immediately started thinking, I, I tweeted, I was like, oh, do we lose someone in the NBA world if Kyrie's not playing and RJ's not on the call? I don't know, but something is going on and we can't act like we didn't all see what happened yesterday. The Nets didn't play yesterday, but every American knows what is going on right now. And if you listen to this pod with us, we're on episode 72. And if you listen from even episode, I don't know, 22 to now, you probably caught us potting. We talked about Kobe's death. We talked about George Floyd. We talked about Black Lives Matter. Unfortunately, the NBA is always implicated in these things that go on in our country because what does the NBA do? They lead and they take the time to protest peacefully, to speak out. Steve Nash spoke out and the Brooklyn Nets, not only tonight, Am I standing here in the Brooklyn Nets throwback jersey, just proud of New Jersey and the New Jersey Nets being showcased with a tribute like this tonight in Brooklyn, something that I didn't know when was going to happen, but I've been calling for for years. At the same damn time, there are people outside the Barclays Center protesting right now. Right now, as we speak, I'm sure they're still out there. What are they protesting? Why did Kyrie not want to play today, potentially? Why did Richard Jefferson have to handle something? We don't know. This is all speculation, but we do know what is going on in the country. And I'm glad that the Nets are always the first ones to speak out, to lead, and not act like basketball is bigger than real life and not act like this sport that we all love and enjoy is bigger than this country. What we saw happen in this country is despicable. It's embarrassing for some, but it's infuriating for others right? Some people are embarrassed because they see people that look like them. Other people are infuriated because they see people get treated in a certain way that they would never get treated if they were doing the same thing. Wanted to get that out. Let's get into the game. The Sixers moseyed their asses into Brooklyn tonight thinking it was sweet. I watched the line change from uh, Sixers minus one and a half to Sixers minus four, Kyrie being out. And I even had people tweeting me, oh, Philly about to run through y'all. Philly about to beat the brakes off y'all. Quit hating, especially if you root for that other team that we don't worry about. It's got nothing to do with what we're doing over here. The Nets come out again and shock the world. The bubble Nets shock the world, right? The Sixers, I I watched that game last night against the Wizards. Brad Beal went off and they were able to finish that one out. And I'm like, man, the Sixers are rolling. We said on a podcast, I think maybe two pods ago or last pod, like, Sixers got a good record. They're at the top of the East. Did not matter. What did you think as soon as this game started? I got a couple notes. I'll pass it to you. What did you think as soon as this game started tonight with the new look court, bringing us back to like Super Nintendo playing basketball and Super Nintendo vibes uh, tonight in Brooklyn? Some, some NBA jam vibes, even earlier than that. I was in the, uh, the yep. later 90s, damn. But it was just... I mean, I'll talk about it from a basketball front. This is the second game we're going. We're going to talk a little bit about the Jazz game as well, obviously, because it's a two episode or a two game episode. And we came out with that same energy. We came out in the Jazz game, just you know, all gas, no breaks. You know, right from the opening tip, playing at a hundred miles an hour. Everyone who was on the court was playing exactly what they needed to do, going exactly as hard as they could go, and you know, it worked. And this lineup that coach Nash has put together a lineup that was a little shocking to some people, because obviously we're without KD in this game, we were without Kyrie, but it's still a huge switch up. I mean, we take Joe Harris out of the starting lineup. We put in Torian Prince, everyone's favorite guy to hate on, you know, Torian Tuesday, we had a Torian Thursday. We'll talk about that. His 13 points on 50% shooting. They take him out. They put old ass uncle Jeff green in the starting lineup who has been an absolutely underrated and massive addition to this team. You know, he had double figures before Joe Harris did in this game. Uncle if you want to know how well how well he's been playing. And then, of course, we put in the man, the myth, the legend, Nets Twitter's favorite, Bruce Brown. And <laughs> it worked. I mean, he threw up the U. We're playing. We got the Miami boy in the game. And his defense is energetic. It's infectious. The whole team is coming out at 100 miles an hour. And I'll, I'll just say in back-to-back games, what we saw was – more so than just the scoring, which in itself was impressive to see all that great scoring without Kevin Durant on the team. And in this game against the Sixers, without Kyrie Irving on the team, that's impressive to be able to put up numbers. Like this team isn't built to put up numbers without those players, right? But we did put up offensive numbers. But more than that, we put up 
defensive numbers and turnover numbers and kept the defense high and the turnovers low, absolutely banging on the turnover margin today. At one point, it was like 27 Nets points scored off turnovers to Philly only had four points scored off Nets turnovers. It's exactly what you wanted from this team. It was the growth we were looking for. It was the spark we were looking for. And I'm just going to say it now. Jared Allen is collecting, I don't know, a hit list, a list of his children. He's expanding the family. I don't know what you want to say about it, but he just went up back-to-back games against two of the best centers in the NBA. And that's not debatable. That's not anything. The $200 million man, Rudy Gobert, coronavirus, Rudy, all that stuff. Defensive (laughs) player of the year, two-time depoy, came out there bullied by Jared Allen. Next game, Joel Embiid. Joel Embiid dropped 38 points yesterday in that game against the Wizards. 38 (laughs) points. And he came out and got bullied by Jared Allen. And this was two years after Jared Allen got damn near murdered on the WWE move that Joel tried to pull in him in the 2019 playoffs with that flying elbow to the face. And it didn't look like Jared forgot about that because he came out and he balled. And Karis balled. He looked like vintage Karis. He looked like bubble Karis. He had the headband, the cornrows in the throwbacks. It just felt right. You didn't see him taking too many of those wild step back threes. He knew what his game was and he played it and he just looked comfortable out there. And I, we just got to give credit to our man, you know, old regime nets go hard. Joe Harris, Broadway Joe, fundamental Joe, retro Joe, whatever you want to call him. I like to call him the greatest three-point shooter in the NBA since he started playing minutes for the Nets. That's a fact. Two percentage points better than anybody else since he started getting consistent minutes with the Nets in 2017. Among people with qualified attempts, a 1,000 plus, he is hitting 44% of his three-point shots. The next closest, Steph Curry, is only hitting 42. He is the best three-point shooter in the NBA, and we saw that tonight. Six of nine from three. Amazing. And, but he didn't just do it from three. He did it from the field. He had turnovers. He created assists. He was doing it on both ends of the court. And he was just pouring in buckets, a season high, 28 points. And I just felt so glad that this game was nationally televised on TNT. Also so glad that we didn't have to watch it on national TV. And we got, you know, Ian Eagle and Sarah Kustak like we needed it. Facts. But Easy. we got the whole league to see what the Nets do, aside from KD and Kyrie, what the next man up Nets do, what Joe Harris does. People were out there saying, hey, I think Joe Harris might be better than Miles Leonard. Who? My, Who? What? What? Joe that's some, Harris. That's NBA Twitter? You saw Joe Harris Twitter? has, yeah. Put some yeah, respect Joe on Joe Harris's Harris's name. Better than those players. And he showed it, and he showed the league. There's not going to be anyone saying, why did Joe Harris get $72 million? He's not worth that. There's none of that now. The Nets just went out and shut down people's negative opinions and negative opinions that were kind of free flowing after the Nets had a losing record. And Katie, ooh, was it Katie and Kyrie, are they not working? Now is Katie, Katie's out and the Nets win two games. What are they bet? The Nets are a good team and they're a deep team and they showed it tonight. And I don't care if this is an overreaction. I don't care if it's any of that. The Nets are having fun and playing good basketball. And that's their method of success. And it's going to keep rolling from here. Yeah, this is a reaction pod and a distraction pod. We're reacting to the game right after the game and distracting you from the country and all the other issues and problems that Americans rather avoid and be distracted by basketball. So cool. The basketball that they were distracted by tonight, I highly enjoyed. I want to send a shout out to Steve Nash. I feel like they were dogging Nash, right? about how he doesn't know how to call timeouts. He doesn't know how to make adjustments. He doesn't know what he's doing. Does he get credit for making these switches in the starting lineup? Does he get credit for this success we've seen? Because very quickly, this team went from can't rebound to rebounding. Not scoring points in the paint, scoring points in the paint. Like, they seem like the, like somebody, and maybe it's Dan Tony, maybe it's Jacques Vaughn as well, the coaches, somebody changed a, a few things that we can see and immediately see results. I love it. 
Uh, I'm also a like like a mojo guy. I knew these jerseys were going to give us mojo tonight. I did not care. I have I've had my jersey on for hours as I stand here with it. I'm taking pictures. I'm telling people send us pictures of your jerseys. This is dope. And the jerseys matter. Those statement jerseys, we were getting waxed in those gray statement jerseys. I was like looking for us to go back to the black jerseys, which is uh, what we did when we beat the Jazz on Tuesday. And then tonight we had the Blues. Hopefully we throw the like city edition Basquiat's back into the uh, the cipher. What else do I have? Because you pretty much hit all the good stuff. DeAndre Jordan. Fuck are you doing, bro? DeAndre Jordan steps into the game and his intention is to fuck the game up. <laughs> he steps in and he's like, I am going to stop play. Like I'm going to get in the game and foul someone and everyone's going to look at me and I'm going to stop playing. Just put my hands on my head, bro. He's got to be better. He's got to be better. I forget who I was talking to on Twitter. Uh, I think it was Anthony. Anthony, I can't remember your last name. Shout out Anthony, bro. He's like, oh, it just makes it worse that he makes like $100 million. I'm like, exactly. Like, you make too much money to come onto the court and fuck the court up, bro. Get off the court. Um, <laughs> you you didn't that, even mention his 4,004 minutes in the Jazz game. Didn't mention it. We, I mean, and we, I wanted to talk about the Jazz games separately. We're, let, we might as well start getting into that. <laughs> The Jazz game, let me see if I have anything else. We talked about the revenge tour for Jared Allen. The turnovers, the turnovers is something I wanted to say because it obviously, if you look at the box score, the, the, the Sixers turned the ball over 20 times. The, the Nets turned the ball over 13 times. Um, the turnovers, we won the turnover battle tonight or whatever. But, like, we turned the ball over in some of the most, like, ridiculous ways and inopportune ways that, like, grind my gears. Uh, your boy Bruce Brown I know everybody loves him but he had a turnover day where I was just like bro what are you doing like Tobias Harris just like anticipated it and picked it from him the turnovers is the one thing we fixed the rebounding we fixed the defense we're getting points in the paint the bench is better right we switch up the starters and the bench and now the we, like we figured out something right they it's, it's not crazy it's analytics it's numbers oh look at the points off the bench let's change who's coming off the bench it doesn't matter. There's no KD, no Kyrie, no problem. We, like, we have a bunch of guys. We're talking about the Nets. Depth, we have depth when guys like Torian Prince play better. Torian Prince, I'm not mad at you. I'm not mad at you anymore, Torian Prince. Do that. Just keep doing it. Just give us enough. Do that. I think I put in the notes, like, Torian Prince, I don't hate you. Average Joe Harris. I, lo I love the whole Iron Eagle average Joe Harris from – dodgeball quote I, I had to send that one out that actually made me laugh I was not expecting him to roast Joe Harris like that and Karis man Karis tonight Frank I solely even said it Karis has to figure out how to play his game when he's playing with KD Kyrie whoever else when Karis has the ball and he can get into the paint and hit his floaters when he can like when when Karis can actually what did I tweet in the beginning of the game I want Karis to remember who he is from start to finish. Don't try and do anything else. Don't try and do anything more. Don't like, just remember who you are. Play your game. TLC, I'm loving because obviously this was a revenge game for him tonight with the Sixers. But if you watch, like, like he, like he was ready to go at Dwight Howard. He's got some dog in him. And I don't know if there's a, uh, you know, a language barrier in me being able to see him, but now I'm starting to see him. Like, I don't know if like, like I'm starting to understand what kind of duty is, whether he speaks English or not. Uh, other than that, let's start moving on to this jazz game, but uh, I'm enjoying talking about the nets and not talking about Katie and Kyrie. And I'm seeing all these people talk about, Oh, how sensitive nets fans are about Katie and Kyrie. No, we're sensitive about like the old regime nets. My guy, Mr. Byrne notice said the core four of the nets, Spencer Dinwiddie get, get well soon. Jared Allen, Joe Harris, Karis Levert. And then some of these other guys mixed in too. Chioza deserves a shout out. I just like cheese's energy. I like when he, you know, gets going. I know he had what eight points tonight, nothing crazy, but like he is part of our, you know, bubble nets team and, and like these like no name nets and now the next man up nets. So, all right, Hudson, let's go back to the jazz game. If you can remember, I know it was two days ago. And between that time, uh, we had a major uh, moment in American history happen. And depending on how they tell the story of the last few days, they got to remember that the nets beat the jazz and Jared Allen had Alfredo that night. And then he had a movie night after, and I think that was the key to victory. 
key to victory. Absolutely. And man, that game feels like it was, uh, it was two weeks ago, not two days ago, but that was a game where I came into it thinking the Nets are playing the team that they are maybe the least suited to play against. They are playing a team that is the, one of the best rebounding teams in the NBA, a team with great shooters, with star power. And the Nets came in and they said, yeah, we don't care. We don't care about any of that. We got this new starting lineup. We got this new energy. We got Jared Allen in the starting lineup. Absolutely. We have Kyrie Irving. You know, we, we, we think about this as the Jared Allen game. Kyrie Irving had 18 points on perfect shooting in the first quarter. He had one of the most efficient scoring nights I've ever seen. That first half, I think he only missed three shots when he had 20-some points. He is our in Ridiculous. It's, it's, it's insane. I'm going to keep saying it like I've been saying all season. You can't play defense on him. You can just hope he misses. And, you know, that really makes me think about something like what you said earlier was, oh, we didn't have enough bench production. Let's just move some of that production to the bench because when Katie and Kyrie come back, that's production guaranteed. You put them out there with any three other players in the NBA, you could put them out there with three Jared Dudleys. They're putting up 40, you know, 30 plus points a night, both of them. It's happening. So I like the move to put a Joe Harris on the second unit to get that energy with Karras on the second unit. And we saw Karras you know, have some early struggles, but then he slid back into his old role, into the role that he was used to playing, you know, with that mid-range game and with those hop steps, getting the fouls. It was beautiful to see him finally break out of that funk that he's been in all season. And it looks like obviously with what we saw tonight, that he is going to remain out of that funk. And we saw him put up 24 points and we saw Kyrie Irving put up 29 points on ridiculous shooting in a game where we just blew out the jazz. But it was the Jared Allen night. He had Alfredo sauce. He had watched the movies. I'm sure he played some video game I've never heard of until 3 a.m. Also after that, whatever, whatever he did, I hope he keeps doing it just like he did these last two days because he went out on Rudy Gobert, defensive player of the year, and just absolutely bullied him up and down the court. We saw Kyrie go behind the back to the Jared Allen hammer. and A tasty dish. I, I don't even know what Ian to Eagles say. Call. You got to let I and Eagle say it best. I, if I was like, if I was in that booth right there and I was, you know, I and Eagle, I wouldn't even know what to say. When I watched that play happen, I, I, I clipped it immediately and I just let it run. I couldn't even, I couldn't even move my hands to the, to the mouse to, to stop <laughs> recording it in time. I like, I didn't know what was going on because Jared Allen just absolutely ruined Rudy Gobert. And this was in the middle of the Rudy Gobert Shaq feud where Shaq was like, I, I, I would ruin you. Rudy Gobert. And uh, it's a feud that I don't really understand. I don't really know why it's a thing. I think Shaq might be mad that he never got a $200 million contract. That's just how inflation works, Shaq. I don't know. I don't want to <laughs> give Shaq an economics lesson, but. Shaq got bread. He's good. He's just, he's a bully. He's just always going to be the NBA's bully, but the lovable, nice, nice bully. Like he's a, he's a good guy, but he like, when he looks at the, like today's generation and these younger players, he's like, they could have never played with me. Yeah, no, absolutely not. But, you know, I, he, if, any, if anyone's allowed to have that energy, he's allowed to have that energy. And who better than a player that, uh, you know, if I could meet any of these Nets players and just spend time with them in high school and college, just as a friend, honestly, I might want it to be Jared Allen. He seems like the nicest, most genuine, lovable dude on the planet. And he went out and absolutely ruined uh, Rudy Gobert's career uh, relentlessly up and down the court, blocking him, dunking on him, like every time he had the ball. And it's just, it's just so nice when Nets Twitter gets the win. And in that same game, we saw Nets Twitter get the Jared Allen starting win and the Bruce Brown starting win. And it, it all just came together. Nets Twitter is the best coach in the NBA collectively. <laughs> and I'm just happy. And I, I hope the good times keep rolling. And honestly, with the way the Nets played against potentially the best team in the NBA tonight, I see no reason why they won't. Man, I, I love that. The fact, like, I love the fact that as soon as you start to sleep on the nets, that's when they're wide awake. It's, it's like, we know we're in New York. We know this is the brightest lights, the big stage. And when we hear other people chirping about our team and what's going on in, in our locker room and what the nets are going to do. And honestly, us as fans too, we hear KD is out for a week. He's going to miss four days. We, we're sick about it. We're like, come on. But you know what? That's when the next man up Nets, the bubble Nets, the no-name Nets mentality kicks back in. All of these guys are capable. All of these guys could do it. I knew 
there was no way that we were going to come out flat. I, I thought that the Jazz were the better team. The Jazz walked into Brooklyn with two losses. The Sixers walked into Brooklyn with one loss. These are two of the best records in the NBA right now, walking into Brooklyn in our six-game homestand we just had, and they're taking L's. Kyrie came out so butter, so smooth. I can't believe it's not butter. I'm watching this dude. I'm waiting for him to miss. I'm waiting for him to miss. I'm like, okay, he's five of five. He's six of six. He didn't miss until there was two minutes left in the half. <laughs> I think he was over 20 points. He was cooking. At one point, the score was 23 to five. And I, and I always say you can't win the game in the first quarter. And I try not to tweet anything, but I was like beating my chest. I'm like my girl was seeing me. My girl is starting to get more into the nets now. She actually brought me to my first game at the Barclays Center. That turned me from being a New Jersey Nets hater of the Brooklyn Nets to the Brooklyn Nets fan that you are listening to on this podcast today. I love everything about the energy that the Nets have brought. And I think what this whole thing has done or will do, it's kind of shifted it. Uh, when we were looking at Katie and Kyrie playing with the Nets, uh, in the first couple games, the first two games, it was like, oh, domination. KD, Kyrie are going to get buckets. Like, this is going to be amazing. We're just going to roll through people. No, that didn't happen. Sometimes these guys aren't going to be on and things aren't going to work that way or whatever. But I felt like there was a lot of deferring to KD and Kyrie. I felt like there was maybe either some overhelping on defense or, you know, just not that fluidity that we have seen with the team. I don't know. I felt like maybe at times the, the team was kind of playing like, not starstruck, but you like, I don't know how to explain it, man. If you're playing on a team with Kyrie and KD, you're trying to pass them the ball. You're trying to play on their level. You're always trying to like, you know, do your best for them. Not saying that uh, we don't need them, but I feel like without them, we, this team got to go out there without that pressure, without that feeling of like having to get the ball to KD and Kyrie, having to play up to their standard and do exactly what they want to do. And I think Kyrie and KD are smart enough basketball minds and basketball players to come back in and weave back in and we will be better for this experience. You go through the adversity first, you'll be better for it. Uh, I love this Nets team already. I love this season already. It has been compelling. The Nets have a new story every single day. Every game, there's something else swirling around the team, some kind of talk, whether it's off the court, on the court stuff. Um, and it's been a fun ride, man. I'm, I'm, I'm really in, enjoying this so far. Um, what else about the Jazz game? It's not too much. It was game eight out of 72, I believe. Uh, this was the end of our uh, homestand. Like I just said, six-game homestand with the Sixers. Next, the Nets go on the road to face the Grizzlies. Uh, back to back, right? Don't am, am I looking at this right? Yeah, we no. play them. We play them tomorrow night. We play them tomorrow night in Memphis, and then we come back home to Brooklyn Sunday. We got the Thunder Tuesday. We got the Nuggets, and I mean, we'll see how these next two games go. Friday and Sunday, we'll probably record Monday. Be back with another episode every two games. That's what we're trying to do. Knock this whole thing out just like that. Any I mean, we got uh, Nuggets Knicks for the episode after that. So that's got to be an episode right there. Okay. Okay. So, Hey, we're seeing it. That's exactly what it's going to be. We will be back after we play the, uh, the thunder and then we'll be doing another one after we play the New York Knicks. I love it. Your Brooklyn Nets are prime time. That's all I got to say about it. This is the thing we've been waiting for as Nets fans, our whole, our whole Nets fans career, our whole Nets fan lives. And they're in the biggest city in the world, the greatest city in the world, and they're prime time. And they big mad because they got to share the city. All right, let's wrap this up, man. You already know the drill. No voicemails came in, but that's okay. We just recorded a couple of days ago. Uh, call the voicemail up. It's super simple. If you want to be heard, if you want your voice to be heard, if you want to ask us a question, call a voicemail. It's 201. 870-0461. Leave a message. Leave your name. Keep it under a minute, please. Review this podcast. This pod is growing. We look better at work when the numbers of the podcast are doing what they're doing. So continue to listen, subscribe, 
rate. And like, we really do need those ratings and subscriptions. So tell your friends that are Nets fans or not even just Nets fans, NBA fans. Then you lure them into the Nets with me and Hudson talking about every two games, every couple days, making gifts, making videos, making Instagram and Twitter stuff. Follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook at Talking Nets. Follow the brand, the company, the empire at John Boy Media. You can follow me at Keith McPherson, but what I really want you to do is follow Hudson Flynn. Hudson, where can they follow you at? You can follow me at Hudson Flynn underscore on Instagram and Twitter. But he, he, doesn't, he doesn't want you to find him there. He wants you to see the work that he's putting in on Talking Nets. That boy be going crazy during the games. You see the clips? Nobody else is doing it like we're doing it. Like, that's just facts. That's just facts. All right, that's all we got. Uh, what was the last thing? I'm, like, all over the place. That's it, man. I, I'm, I, I don't think there's anything else that we didn't hit on. There's no voicemails, no reviews. Tell a friend, to, uh, tell a friend we're Talking Nets. We will be right back after the next two games. The Nets are five and four. Don't panic. Nine games out of 72. We're going to be just fine. I think they're saying there's a chance KD uh, maybe could play in OKC Sunday. Did you hear that? I did hear that. Yeah, if he if he passes another test and he's all good, he'll be ready to go on Sunday. Back in his old stomping grounds. I would Not missing love that. to see that. Let's go Nets. Brooklyn. We go hard, go 